This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to take a little bit of a break from Bitcoin and talk about one of my favorite stock trading strategies. I've been getting some questions about stock trading strategies. And here's one of my favorite ones. This is how to swing trade a stock during earnings or how to swing trade an earnings report. Now, the most difficult game to play is to try to predict what earnings are going to be. Is a stock, is a company going to beat their earnings? If you're a professional investor and I've known uh, guys working at hedge funds who use this strategy, you can order repeatedly from the, com the company. And then what you can do, especially if they disclose their order number or their, their invoice number, you can use this to model the revenue number. So let's say uh, you want to uh, track Peloton. This And this can obviously get very expensive. You could order a, a new Peloton every couple of weeks or every week, and you can monitor the order numbers. I'm not sure if this works particularly for uh, Peloton. A lot of companies have gotten really smart about this, but this was a strategy that used to work really well. And I imagine there's some smaller cap and mid cap company, mid cap companies that this will work for, where you basically buy their product and try to model their revenues as a way of getting an idea: Are they running ahead of where they should be in terms of revenues and profits, or are they are they falling behind? So that's a very difficult way to do it. And obviously, if you're buying a new Peloton every single week and trying to have it sent to another address and using different names, this can get very expensive and very complicated. But there's an easier way to trade earnings, and this is using something called post earnings announcement drift, or PEAD. This is a market anomaly that's been uh, tracked by market researchers for many years, and I cover it and mention it in a few of my books as well. And the way it works is this, is you, is you don't try to predict earnings, but you react to the earnings. You view the market's reaction to the earnings, and then you decide to ride the wave. And I'm going to show you how, how you can ride the wave of whale investors doing this. So PEAD has the highest chance of happening. And again, nothing is a sure thing in the stock market. We just are looking for high probability trades. We're always going to want to use a stop loss. But PEAD happens when a stock gaps up on high volume on an unexpectedly good news. This is usually their forward guidance that does this. And when a stock makes a big move on high volume, it has a tendency to keep moving in the same direction for a few days, especially if it's the result of new information being introduced to the market, which is what happens at an earnings report. You have a summary of what happened in the past quarter, and you, then you also have forward guidance where management tells you whether they're expecting operating performance to improve or to decline, whether they're expecting revenues to be higher than previously forecast, etc. And so when you have this new information hitting the market, it can create a serious imbalance of buys and sells, and this is what makes a stock gap up. Even better if it gaps up to new all-time highs. So I'll show you an example that I've been trading. This is Palo Alto Networks. The ticker is PANW. And we had a perfect example of this a couple days ago uh, on August 23rd after hours. Uh, uh, PANW reported their earnings. Their earnings were really good. How do we know they were really good? Well, we don't have to know that much about the company. All we need to know is how the market moves in response to that. And so that's the nice thing about this. You don't have to be an expert in uh, Palo Alto Networks, for example. But we can see the following day when the market, so the earnings were released in the afternoon after the market was closed, early evening, late afternoon, depending on your time zone. And then the market opened and uh, began to trade the next day. And it gapped up. We can see it gapped up on extra high volume right here. And it, it also gapped to new all-time highs. It blew past the previous all-time highs. So that's a very good sign. Also, the 50-day moving average, the blue line trading above the red line here, the 200-day moving average. So everything looking good in an uptrend. And then the market uh, gets this surprise, surprisingly good news. We know it was a surprise because the market has this big move. And this is where we can enter and really profit from this. The way you trade this is or the way I trade it is I usually wait until sometimes I'll do it midday but I usually wait until close to the market close on that day that it gaps up. So again, I don't buy it before earnings because it could gap down, gap up or gap down. I buy it after it's already made the move, which is a little bit counterintuitive. It's also psychologically very difficult to buy a stock that's hitting new all-time highs. I not a lot of new investors and traders find this difficult whereas the pros know that this is actually a very can be very high 
uh, probability setup simply, simply because there's no one who's underwater in this stock. When the stock's trading up here, every single person who has ever bought the stock and held on has a profit. And so that can enable the stock to really run. So I'll buy near the market close, as close to the market close as I can. And then I'll often put my stop at the low of that daily candlestick or bar. And then I'll just hold the stock uh, for a number of days and watch how it behaves. One way of doing this is you can move your stop up. So on the first day, you buy at the close, you put your stop at the low of that candlestick. I'm actually going to scroll in a little bit here, make it a little bit easier to uh, easier to see. So what you can do is you, uh, after you buy on the, that, that gap up day, you put your stop at the bottom of that candlestick. The next day, you move your stop up to the bottom of the next candlestick, etc. So you're always using the previous day's low as your stop loss level. Usually it's wise to take profits three, four, five, six days into the run. These This price announcement drift doesn't uh, usually extend much further than that. Uh, but this is one way, one way of, uh, of trading it. You could also uh, put your stop around a very long uh, round number. If you want, you could, um, so round number like 420, for example, here, or um, once you get above 440, that could be your new stop loss level. So there are different ways of managing the profit target and the exit. I do talk about these in more detail in my courses. But the important point here is that this is a high probability trade setup. Why does this work? Well, it works because institutional investors, traders can sometimes take days to adjust their position, especially if they're very large positions. So let's say a stock trades $5 billion per day buying and selling, uh, and you have a $500 million position. You're, you're managing a multi-billion dollar hedge fund, for example, or a mutual fund, and you need to adjust that $500 million position. Maybe you need to add to it. Maybe you need to subtract from it. If you did it all in one day, you would end up being 10% of the volume, which is a big no-no and can end up moving the market and giving you a lot of slippage, giving you really bad fills. So what you're going to do is if you're a large investor, you're going to need to slowly trickle in your orders over a series of days. If you're buying more stock, you need to spread out your buying over multiple days. If you're selling, you need to spread it out over multiple days. Now, stock earnings, a stock earnings report in the forward guidance, as we've said, is new information that can take a few days to be incorporated into the market consensus. For example, if you were short Palo Alto Networks going into earnings and you had a large short position, you might it might take you days to buy back your position, especially if your position is large relative to the daily trading volume. If you're long Palo Alto Networks uh, and you see this good news and the good forward guidance, you may want to increase your position as well. And again, you have those volume constraint, constraints if you're a large investor or a large trader. So this is good news for those of us who are uh, trading less than a billion dollars or less than a hundred million dollars or whatever it is. As a small trader, you can ride the wave that is caused by these much larger investors. And you don't have to worry. It's very easy to get in and out if you're trading just a few thousand shares when these institutions have to trade tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or sometimes millions of shares, all in response to new information. So how do you find picks like this? Well, one way of doing it is to just comb through the different earnings uh, reports online. CNBC does a very nice summary. They give you the big, uh, the big news, Peloton moving, Salesforce moving, etc. Another way to find good names is to look in the list of stocks that are trending on stock with stock twits. This is the uh, the little uh, the ticker on top. It tends to, it looks like it's a it's a bunch of crypto right now, but there are also some stock names mixed in there as well. So that's one way to draw your attention to that, as well as the stock twits earnings calendar. I'll put links to everything in the description notes below. So for example, we can see on Monday, uh, August uh, 30th, which is coming up in just two days, we can see the list of all the different stocks that are recording. For example, we can see here that Zoom is reporting after the bell. That means after the market closes. So what we can do is we can um, keep an eye on that, see how it trades the following day. And then the following day at the close, if, if Zoom is gapped up to new all-time highs uh, on, on strong volume, uh, then we can uh, we can go long. So this is a great way of keeping track of the earnings calendar. 
as well as the CNBC, they'll highlight the really big movers. So that's kind of the lazy man's version of it. But if you really want to dig down, uh, and there are not that many stocks each day, it can be anywhere from you know to five or ten to maybe forty or so, and you can really just pick the ones that interest you the most. Another nice screener is contained in Trading View. I have a subscription to this, so I'm not sure if this is available without a subscription. But you can look in the tab that says Market Movers and Gainers, and then you can sort by the change. I tend to ignore stocks that trade under $20 a share or even under $50 a share, so I would ignore these penny stocks here that are moving 70 80%. They tend not to trade quite as well. But when you get the stocks that are a little higher priced, maybe in the hundreds, for example, Bill.com right here, moved up 30%, almost 30% on Friday, B-I-L-L. -L. So this one would catch my eye. You could do this over the weekend, for example, and then I would go to my stock chart here, I'd type in, type in Bill, and we would see that this is very similar to what happened with Palo Alto Networks. We're gapping up to new 52-week highs. The volume is much higher than normal. The chart looks great and very strong bar where we, clo we closed much higher than we opened. So this would be a decent trade to have put on on Friday or early on Monday, depending where it's trading, you could enter somewhere near this closing price. You put your stop down here, and so you have to size it accordingly. And then you hold it for a few days and hopefully benefit from continued upwards uh, drip. So this is one way of screening for it. You can go through here and find just a huge number of names. Again, you can screen out all the penny stock names and really look at the higher price stocks. There's nothing wrong with higher price stocks. Uh, you shouldn't be scared away from them, even if you're trading a small account, because you can buy fractional shares using some brokers, and you can also just uh, have a smaller smaller position, because what really matters are the percentage moves, not how many shares you're able to buy. If you found this video helpful and you like stock trading strategies like this, you will love my online courses, especially learn to trade stocks like a pro, uh, momentum stock secrets, uh, learn to day trade, like, day trade like a pro. I do talk in a lot more depth about um, post earnings announcement drift and other market anomalies, other stock trading strategies that you can use. And if you uh, click in the link in the des description notes below, it'll take you to this page and then you can click on any of these boxes and see the list of all the lectures that are involved. If you join Trader University Premium, you get access to all of these courses as well as my list of my favorite momentum stocks and my favorite long-term investments. So if this is something that interests you, you can click on the link in the description notes below. You can browse this list of courses. I also have courses here on trading options and futures if you really wanna leverage your returns in the stock market or the commodity markets. And uh, so you can go through here and look, take a look at all the lectures. If you wanna purchase, you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, click Get It Now. And that will take you to this checkout page. Now, normally access to everything, to all 15 courses, my favorite stock picks, my favorite long-term investments, momentum stocks, etc. Normally access is just $125 for 30 days. But because you've listened this far, I want to give you a special coupon code. You can click right here where it says have a coupon code and type in YT, as in YouTube, 99. Click update and that'll take $26 off so you get access to everything for just $99. There are no long-term contracts you can uh, cancel before 30 days is up and not be charged again. Uh, but if you choose to stick around, I'm constantly adding new courses. I'm constantly updating the list of momentum stocks, and I'm constantly adding new long-term investments. So be sure to check that out. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below, especially I'd be interested. I've been doing a lot of Bitcoin videos, so if, you, if you'd like to see stock trading strategies like this as well, and you like this kind of video, please let me know. If you want me just to stick to Bitcoin and crypto, you can also let me know that or suggest other ideas for future YouTube videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.